Hello, we're looking here at the sagittal midline surface of the brain and uh, here is the cerebral hemisphere, this is the corpus callosum, the third ventricle, this is of course the cerebellum, the pons, the medulla, this is the fourth ventricle and uh, let me just uh, show you the outer surface of the cerebral hemisphere and cerebellum and brainstem. The main pathology is located in this region and What we can see over here is a cystic lesion with several cyst locules or cyst compartments and uh, lining the cyst locules is this yellowish friable appearing material. This is compressing on the optic chiasm just superior to it and also potentially compressing on the third ventricle. This cystic lesion is located in the supracellar region and the diagnosis here is a craniopharyngioma. It is important to take note of the location of this tumor, particularly uh, because it can compress on several surrounding structures, which can give rise to specific clinical signs and symptoms. Craniopharyngiomas are tumors that arise from the remnants of the Rothkus pouch, and uh, this is actually an evagination at the region of the roof of the developing mouth, so we often see ectodermal elements here. It is located mostly in the supracellar region, but sometimes also in the cellar region. And epidemiology, it has two age peaks. One is actually quite young in life, in childhood, and the other is in older adults around 65 years or older. Clinically, patients may complain of headaches or visual disturbances, which is not surprising because of their proximity to the optic chiasm. And children, very importantly, they can actually uh, give rise to pituitary hypofunction and therefore growth hormone deficiency. And we can also have endocrine effects, even though this is not directly invading or involving the pituitary gland. Grossly, these tumors may appear quite cystic, as you can see in this instance. Um, they can also sometimes be solid. And in cystic lesions, the locules may contain this thick yellowish fluid, which resembles engine oil, motor oil, or machine oil. And as mentioned, this may compress the surrounding structures, including the optic chiasm, cranial nerves, and also the third ventricle, and give rise to specific signs and symptoms. Let's take a quick look at the histology. And microscopically, there are actually two major types of craniopharyngioma. The commoner one is the adamantinomatous craniopharyngioma. This usually occurs more frequently in children and can also occur in adults. And the less common one is the papillary craniopharyngioma. It is usually the adamantinomatous one that is cystic grossly. So this is an example of an adamantinomatous craniopharyngioma and on imaging there may be cystic areas or areas of calcification. So what we see here are islands of squamous epithelium with peripheral nuclear palisading and this means that the nuclei at the edge form this row of uh, very nicely lined up nuclei. So that is what palisading means. There is also often a loose area where the cells form this kind of spongy network and this is called stellate reticulum and in addition there are areas of anucleate keratinized cells and these compacted cells are known as wet keratin. So this tumor often has areas of cystic change. Let's take a look at the other variant which is the papillary craniopharyngioma and uh, this tumor actually simply shows a papillary architecture with fibrovascular cores. You can see here the fibrous stroma, and these are covered by benign stratified squamous epithelium. So it resembles a squamous papilloma, which is a benign tumor. These tumors tend to be benign, and in general, the prognosis is very good, especially for the smaller tumors. Um, once they are totally excised, there is a very good recurrence free as well as overall survival. Rarely, these tumors may undergo malignant transformation, especially if they are exposed to radiation, and they may develop into squamous cell carcinoma. So to summarize, this is an example of a cystic tumor that's occurring in the supracellar region. 
and we can see uh, several cislocules containing yellowish material. And this is a craniopharyngioma. This particular case is that of an adamantinomatous craniopharyngioma, which is the commoner tumor, and this often arises in children. Thank you.